cut 10 or 20 seconds, and uh, either way, we'll, we'll proceed from there. So um, at this point, I'm just going to go ahead and share my screen. And let's start presenting this. So basically, folks, thank you everyone for joining today. Um, we're going to finish off this, uh, this presentation with actually a demonstration of, uh, of PillBot. And uh, so one thing is, as I present this, if anyone has a burning question, um, feel free to pop in and uh, and uh, I'll, I'll take a few seconds and try to try to answer the question. Uh, we'll try not to get too um, too drawn into any deep conversations, but questions are okay. And I'm hoping for a robust Q and A session afterwards, um, while those robots might even be still live in in my stomach. So let's have some fun with this today. Okay, so. Uh, there's a rule in the med device industry that uh, you have to have a weird name for the company. So endiotics uh, means endoscopy, diagnostics, and treatment. We want to go inside the human body. We want to understand what's wrong, and we, we want to fix it. And we believe that the answer is micro robotics. So let's, uh, there we go. Um, so I, I kind of had a, a fire lit under me when I saw what happened with given imaging selling to Covidian. I think it was like 860 million. Uh, back in 2014. And as a kid raised with science fiction, I just always thought it was, you know, inevitable that robots would go in the human body and fix things. You know, I think we dream of like nanobots at the molecular level, right? But it just kind of bugged me that we weren't really seeing aggressive developments necessary. Like decades would go by and, you know, you'd see a research paper, but no products in the market treating patients. So endiotics is, is very much focused on getting a product to market as quickly as possible and just making this real. Okay, so what I'd like to, to basically visualize here is let's take someone who's got a, a bellyache, right? And maybe it's persistent. Um, you know, if, if that's me, it's probably all the coffee I'm drinking, right? But, you know, there are things in the stomach uh, like cancer, polyps, all sorts of stuff that, that could really be a problem. And the way that we would go and figure out what's what's wrong with you is, uh, first of all, you got to go to a hospital. And when you go there, they're going to start gatekeeping because endoscopies are painful. They require drugs. It's not a lot of fun. So it's usually going to be your third visit to the hospital before you actually get the procedure, second or third visit. And if you just draw a circle around all those hospital trips, whatever antacids they tried, um, and then finally the visit itself with the sedation and the recovery and you know, whatever devices were involved. Draw a circle around that and that's what it costs uh, to do an endoscopy and that's the impact it has on a patient's life doing it. It's just, it's not that fun. Um, and uh, you know, on the other side of this, oh, and by the way, my little robots are gonna be waking up every couple of minutes here. So uh, let's put them to sleep real quick. So uh, this is kind of a fun little thing. I apologize for the, uh, interruption, but we're, we're actually having a little bit of fun here. Okay, um, so let me minimize and you can, yeah, there we go. Let's uh, sleep for 10 minutes. <laughs> and uh, we really appreciate uh, everyone coming on to experience, you know, this real-time R&D. Okay, I've got the bots put to sleep and let me go ahead and share the screen again. Okay, awesome. And pop up to uh, the presentation, cool. <laughs> This is going to happen a few times, so uh, please just uh, have fun with it. Okay, so um, yeah, endoscopy is not that fun. What else could we do? Um, and and I guess we we should talk about pill cameras real quick. Is that uh, we, we thought in the late '90s that pill cameras were going to kind of solve endoscopy, like you wouldn't have to do it anymore, you wouldn't have to get a colonoscopy. Um, but unfortunately, as of today, they're like a one to. We're here to sort of take what was accomplished with the world of passive pill cameras and kind of use that as a, as a jumping board um, to, to go take it to the next level. Okay, so for us, we think the next level is PillBot, all right? So PillBot is a little swimming robot. Um, uh, right now, <laughs> we're controlling it with an Xbox controller. And our core technology is just, let's, let's put a moving eyeball into the stomach, right? Let's just make it super easy for someone to visually examine the insides of your stomach. And we're gonna cut it at that. You know, we're not, we're not gonna do biopsy right away. Um, we're just gonna make it really easy to look around. Um, and the way we do this, we're, we're kind of proud of this, is it's basically a little quad pump jet. 
which is to say, hey, Marcus, give me that drum. <laughs> it's basically using the same control theory um, as, a, as a drone, right? And thanks, thanks. What we've seen is um, drones are awesome and they can do really things. Have you ever seen drone racing? Um, and we think that a quad pump jet swimmer allows us to, to do like really elegant motion inside the human body. Um, and, you know, we filed a bunch of patents on this and, and, and also what comes next. We're basically trying to create the magic school bus. Okay, so uh, I've been designing med devices for 14 years uh, here in the San Francisco Bay Area. And uh, as Harry mentioned, uh, a couple of, of good exits under the belt. Um, I, I did start off in aerospace engineering, but I, I just kind of love being able to, in an acute way, help someone um, like right before your eyes. It's kind of cool. Uh, Dan Moyer, uh, who's on this call, uh, is the wizard at Enbiotics, and he's responsible for designing the uh, the circuit boards, which fold up kind of like origami, and as uh, doing all the embedded firmware and software. Although recently, we've finally been able to find some outside resources to to to, to take a little bit of a load off Dan, um, and I'll name them today. Uh, Kratos Technologies is a local group that's been doing really good work for us, um, so we're very proud to be building that relationship. Um, James Erd, uh, who's uh, visible uh, on this call, is a uh, he's he's our Renaissance man. Uh, James and I uh, have this addiction to cast iron, and I think we're up to about forty thousand pounds of machine tools um, that we've collected: mills, lathes, power hammer, forge, whatever. We love to make stuff, and you know, like some, you know, are you an engineer, an artist, or just a maker? Like I don't know. We we love to make stuff, and finally. Um, Alex Lupke, who's also here, uh, we call him Maverick because he's our best pilot. Um, he's out of the X uh, uh, Moonshot factory and basically scares the hell out of me. So I asked him to be chairman um, to, to sort of guide us. And uh, the four of us have been doing crazy stuff for a long time. Um, uh, Dan, myself, and James have all been med device engineers in various ways. Um, and then uh, Marcus, who's going to be piloting, is a uh, is a Mav's son, and he's actually studying artificial intelligence at Stanford. So we've got some awesome people on this project, um, and uh, it's it's been quite a quite an adventure. So uh, I spent my whole career as a uh, you know a med device R and D engineer, but uh, I didn't know how to uh, launch a company. So uh, we went through Founder Institute um, at the beginning of 2019. Graduated, we're in the top two percent of all FI companies, which we're very proud of. Um, we we trademark. Uh, Pillbot, because we thought that was cool. We started filing patents, uh, raised two rounds of funding now. Um, pretty excited to, uh, uh, to, to have uh, oversubscribed all of our funding rounds so far, uh, pretty substantially. And back in June of 2020, uh, we swallowed the first one of these robots. Um, and uh, it's, uh, it's been quite an adventure. The, the tech we're going to show you today is not perfect, but it is real. And we believe that we're on a rapid iterative path to a to a to an MVP. Um, and you know, here's just a fun picture, kind of showing what that adventure looks like, right? So you've got Poolbot, which is just Raspberry Pi hardware, <laughs> right? But we raised one hundred eighty-five thousand dollars with Poolbot. Um, uh, we went down to the next size with Custom Electronics. Finally, didn't raise anything with that. We got to thumb size and started uh, started brought in about a quarter million with that. And then finally, um, you know, getting down to a swallowable size. And you know, what's small, what's big? Those are those are funny questions that we ask ourselves all the time. Um, okay, so let's let's start talking about what the state of the art and the state of the industry looks like. Um, there are some amazing technologies um, all around the world being developed that are going collectively to drastically improve the patient experience, um, which is which is something that is very important to me. Like. You know, I'm sure everyone on this call has 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 known someone who passed away from some terrible disease or has been afflicted by something scary, and we just see an industry that is trying to make awesome technology to help people. So let's look at what's happening in China. So Ancon Technologies uh, is is releasing NaviCam, and I, I think the the commercial entity is uh, Onx Robotica, but the the product is NaviCam, and it is a moving pill camera. Um, these these guys would would be our absolutely like closest direct sort of one to one type of competition, um, and what they do is they use magnetic fields to move a pill camera around inside a patient, um, which is awesome because they're giving you active diagnostic power. 
Um, so what, what's our mission at Endiotics? Our mission would probably be to deliver an equivalent um, type of diagnostic power, the ability to, to move the camera around and look where you want to look and go where you want to go. Um, and I think, you know, we can talk about differentiation a little bit. We're, we're kind of happy that we, we don't really require a hospital visit necessarily. Um, and we're, we're not necessarily relying on capital equipment uh, because all the tech is on board. But honestly, these folks really validate our mission as a company. And we see them as, a, as you know, awesome peers. Okay, this, this is freaking cool. So EMPA Robotics, uh, I just saw this on LinkedIn a few days ago, and I'm going to be waking up at 4 a.m., to attend a conference in Switzerland over Zoom. Um, this is like a multi-tailed flagellating swimmer, right? Like look at the biomimicry here. It's like a jellyfish. And if they're able to sort of create a push me, pull you effect with those flagellating tails, like, you know, these guys could actually be a pretty good competitor to Endiotics too. So super excited about this tech. And I, I just kind of love the, I love the biomimicry and I love the diversity of ideas that are out there. Um, so super cool and definitely want to learn more about what they're up to. Um, Bionaut Labs just got funded by, I think it was Peter Diamandis. Um, I've been trying to get to him as well, but uh, uh, these guys are, these guys are super cool. They're using um, external, uh, what is it? Magnetic fields, probably external forces to induce motion in very, very small, um, you know, call them robots, Bionauts. And they actually want to inject it into the base of the spine um, into the, the, the fluid and actually let them kind of swim up and do like targeted therapies, drug deliveries, all kinds of stuff. So, I mean, the future is kind of finally seeming to be sort of now-ish, right? This is pretty cool. Um, so, okay, let's let's take a hard look at endiotics itself and like, you know, how are we positioning ourselves? What do we want to do? Okay, so what we're saying is we want to put the full visual inspection power of an endoscope um, in the stomach into the patient experience of swallowing a, a pill camera, right? So um, uh, Jeff Martha over at Medtronic has recently partnered with Amazon and um, Medtronic now owns the pill cam product line. And Medtronic is allowing patients to swallow pill cameras in their own homes. Um, this, this is amazing, right? Especially in the time of COVID, right? You're, you're eliminating unnecessary travel and exposure. Um, but really, it's just kind of more dignified, fun. I'm sure it saves a lot of money, right? So um, we, we kind of want to piggyback on that and use the fact that we don't really have any capital equipment. Like, <laughs> sorry for being kind of a fatty here, but I've got, I've got a radio duct tape to my belly. Our goal is just to basically have um, the robot talks via low frequency radio to a dongle that is probably just plugged into a, a phone or, or a laptop or something. And that's basically our equipment. Um, uh, the dongle talks to the laptop, which can talk to the internet. Um, basically just like create a product that, that you could roll out to a tiny clinic anywhere in the world. Um, here in America, it's kind of like, you know, do it at home and that's kind of awesome and futuristic, but this could, this could work in refugee camps. This could work in the third world. This could work in low earth orbit or beyond. Um, and uh, to Harry's point earlier about me trying to get on an airplane again, um, right now, you know, R&D issues we're working through would be like, you know, our buoyancy is not that great. It like sinks to the bottom of the stomach, as you'll see, and then we drive around over the wrinkles, right? Um, we actually got in a Cessna 310 recently and put ourselves into a dive just for a few seconds of weightlessness. And the cool thing is, you know, that's like a GI suites level of diagnostic power in the cockpit of an airplane falling out of the sky. All right, uh, we're gonna move on a sec, but uh, I gotta pop out of this because our robots just woke up again. So I'm thinking like 10 more minutes. Awesome. Okay, folks. Uh, well, maybe, maybe 10, maybe five. <laughs> Here we go. So let's hit Z for sleep. And I'm thinking eight minutes. There we go. Z for sleep, eight minutes and Cool. Okay, the robots are back to sleep, and I'm coming back to you folks. Okay. Oh, this is so fun. I, I really appreciate being able to, to just take you right into our R&D here. Um, we actually did a lot of this work right here in uh, my living room in Redwood City. Um, we've got the 3D printers and the laser cutters and uh, the mini lathes. It's great. Okay, so back on point. Um, we love what the Chinese are doing. 
but uh, forced in a hospital visit does affect the patient experience a little bit. So here's our here's kind of our, our ruthless differentiation. Uh, we want to bring an active procedure which allows us to sort of be a primary device used as a mass screening tool, not, not a niche use case. Uh, sedation free, that's awesome. Um, at home, if you want it, um, uh, let's control this thing over the cloud in one mode and do real-time data analytics, right? We can do a lot of fun stuff with that. Although in third world countries, uh, doctors are asking us for no internet necessary. So a direct connectivity model between the, the robot, the dongle and the phone is gonna be important too. So we'll, we'll, we'll talk about like A, B on that one. Finally, it's just no capital equipment. Um, I, I'm not sure exactly what the, uh, the, 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 the Chinese uh, magnetic actuation equipment is. My guess is they're probably building it a lot cheaper than you would expect. Um, but still that, that is a fair amount of equipment um, to, to, to occupy a room and all that stuff. Okay, so in general, uh, the, the, the electronic, you know, pills landscape is rapidly evolving. Um, things are moving really quickly. People are really starting to realize like you can put electronics in the human body and they don't have to be connected with wires and cords and catheters, right? And we see this as a whole new market category if we wanna talk about money. I see this as like micro robotics inside the human body becoming a major thing, um, starting with some of the products that are just starting to hit market. Um, so um, it's, it's not all big successes. Like our friends over at Proteus Digital Health are, were also based in Redwood City. Uh, they were doing electronic pills um, that could communicate that they had been taken. So it's like making sure patients take the medicine. Um, that reached a $1.5 billion valuation and took $500 million down with it, right? So um, uh, I guess one thing we're proud of here at Endiotics is uh, we got to 18 robots through people on 500,000 burned of investor money, which we're, we're very proud of. Question from the audience. Oh, question. Does it dissolve in the human body? Uh, yeah, this is a great question. Uh, no. So any uh, pill camera is designed to be inert and safe so that it doesn't um, uh, it, uh, react with the human body. So it's kind of like when a kid swallows a Lego man, you're like, oh my God. Eventually it just comes out in the, in the toilet, right? Um, and so we, we're just sort of piggybacking on the world of, of pill cameras with that. Um, our goal is to uh, just sort of have an inert, roundish, you know, pill that's not going to damage the human body. Um, and that's not actually utterly completely trivial, right? And pretty much everything you touch on in the medical landscape is going gonna, is gonna to have some very interesting conversations that go along with it, right? Okay, so just kind of moving down. Um, Lots of development in the pill camera work. Um, MIT is working with Nova Nordisk on doing drug delivery from dissolvable capsules that then reach a certain location and are able to deliver some drug. Pretty awesome stuff. People are starting to make biological robots where they're taking living cells and building up like custom life forms. I mean, <laughs> this is pretty cool, right? Um, and then uh, Medtronic's actually making a pacemaker that is like smaller than a pill camera that you can insert with a catheter um, directly into the heart um, and not even require like a, a surgery to, to you know, cut down to the heart and place you know, objects. So basically just awesome stuff going on. And we, we wanna be a part of it. And I think what, what Endiotics is all about is getting this stuff to move around and become a functional platform. Okay, so um, we're gonna get a little bit more commercially minded here. So. Um, our first revenue is probably going to be selling this within what you would call the pill camera market. Um, but that, that, like we say, is a niche market. We're mainly there um, for the predicate pathway we think we can do with FDA because uh, we're sort of like a pill camera that squirts water out the back. And we're hoping we can work with FDA uh, to get a 510k process. And we're also very interested in the insurance reimbursement codes for commercial pill cameras. So that's kind of where we start. But what we're really trying to do here is go after the, the lion's share of the endoscopy devices market. Um, that would be 67 billion, but that covers all devices going into this, you know, down the throat, up the, up the rear, right? Um, you know, what, what, what fraction is purely in the stomach? You know, we can always take that offline, but, but we do see a tremendously um, significant market that we think we can be disruptive in very quickly um, and, uh, and, and, and just kind of have that be our first step. And like we mentioned, you know, this is a new category. In my opinion, this category, micro robotics inside the human body, um, that's just cool, right? Like 
I want to lay the groundwork so that the people that follow us can can get us drive us all the way down to nanotech, right? But instead of just waiting for nanotech to happen, let's do microtech or <laughs> macrotech, you know, whatever you want to call this. Um, and we'd like to captivate the public eye with what we're doing. Just I want to make med device med tech sexy again. I want it to be I want it to be um, something that you hear like a little kid talking about in the supermarket. Um, and I think the way we do that is just lean into the challenges, right? We, we have regulatory challenges. Let's lean into it. Let's not be afraid of regulation. Um, because when we get bold and ambitious and excited, um, we get to we get to actually, you know, sometimes save a life, right? And that's that's kind of awesome. Or maybe just improve someone's life. Okay, so, uh, you know, pure money. How do, how do we make money? How do we be a functional um, company here? And by the way, uh, questions like that, that was a great format. So we're monitoring the chat room and bam, that was awesome. Okay, so a typical pill camera will reimburse for about $500 US. Um, there's an additional reimbursement for the procedure, but the object is a $500 uh, reimbursement. And honestly, uh, we're building our robots right now for about 35 bucks each. Um, so we, we think in volume, we could easily drop that below the $25 mark. And that, that, that would give you sort of the magical 95% gross margin which is often a target in the med device community. Um, and, you know, it's, it's fun to think that, uh, you know, uh, you, you could do a bunch of cases and make a bunch of money, but what we're trying to really do more than anything is if we draw the circle around an endoscopy, um, and then we draw the circle around using a pill bot, if we can most of the time do the same job and have like drastically lower costs overall, then I think we're doing something pretty good. Um, so that that's that's central to our thinking, and you know we're always open to this. Yeah. Segue question for the next slide. Oh, you, why don't you ask them, Perfect. Timmy? Right. So, so so and then we'll, we're these are good segue questions coming up on chat. So first of all, what percentage of endoscopes require a biopsy? Yeah. Necessitating a visit to a medical provider. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you two numbers and then uh, and then a little joke. So we're really proud to have a, a world bot leading gastroenterologist on the team. His name is Dr. Boo Hussein Hay out of King's College London. And uh, you know he, he couldn't make today because he's uh, at a leadership event. Um, but Dr. Hay is super excited about what we're doing. And, and he thinks that in his own practice, he'd be able to use um, uh, the pill bot about 70, 70%, 75% of the time um, instead of going straight to an endoscopy. And in those cases, we're about to put the bots to sleep again. In those cases, about 15 to 17% of them, in his opinion, would progress to um, an, an actual biopsy, an actual requirement for an endoscopy. Now, those ratios look pretty good. And um, you better believe, let me, uh, I'm gonna exit here and put the bots to sleep, I think in maybe five more minutes. Um, Eight more minutes. Eight more minutes? Okay. Some good questions. Going after the bots here. Um, let's go Z. Let's go eight. Sleep and sleep. Nope. Eight minutes. <laughs> awesome. Okay, cool. So um, let's let's go back to uh, screen sharing. And I guess I am screen sharing, so we're, we're good to go. So let me maximize this. Um, we're talking with venture capitalists all the time right now, like, you know, we're, we're actively fundraising, obviously. Um, and uh, the question is, are those ratios flipped or not, right? So our most excited GI said, I'd use this 70, 75% of the time, and it's a great mass screening tool. Some GIs are saying, hey, man, this doesn't have biopsy. I'm not sure what the use case is. This is just a pill camera that moves, you know, and pill cameras already exist. That's an active discussion. Um, and I guess what I'm really excited about it. I mean, we're doing a, we're doing a really comprehensive survey right now. We have a nurse leading that effort. Um, but uh, we feel very strongly on this team that this one is like a, a big winner. Um, and, uh, we're, you know, we're kind of happy to back that up. But all you have to ask yourself is just, do you think a moving eyeball in the stomach has value? Um, clearly the Chinese do, right? Okay, so uh, here, let's move into the, the next. next slide. And then um, <laughs> and we have some more questions, but we'll, and we'll get to them. Okay, okay so uh, for, for a more general audience, you know, how the hell do you get a hardware enabled FDA regulated, you know, device to market? Um, you know, going through Founder Institute, I, I sort of, we stood out a little bit as a, as a difficult to fund company, difficult, uh, you know, this isn't an iPhone app. Um, but it turns out we, we have a great 
process for this. And within the bio to device group, I think everyone on this call is going to be much more used to what, what I'm saying here is basically, yeah, we swallowed our own robots. That's cute. It's a fundraising stunt. We're proud of it. Um, but our next step is going into IRB trials at local hospitals. So I actually have an ask on this call is I'm looking for GIs in the Bay Area who are excited about this that might want to do IRB or institutional review board trials where you're just doing like three to five patients at a time. You know your, your tech is basically a potato. You make sure you're not going to hurt anyone. And you, you get it into an actual patient in an actual hospital and the doctor then gives you extremely targeted feedback like, okay, get me neutral buoyancy, get me a little bit more battery life, your video sucks, right? The, these are the things that we want to perfect until at the end of our IRB trials, we want gastroenterologists to say, Tori, if you do not give me this device right now, I'm going to lose my mind, right? That's, that's, that's what R&D engineers do, right, is make the device actually do what we want it to do. Um, and, uh, and from there, we want to go into a 510K with FDA. Um, we have Lindsay Consulting. Nancy Lindsay is a, an amazing regulatory clinical quality um, a, a person who's just been the champion of so many devices in the Bay Area going through 510Ks. And as long as I've ever done exactly what she tells me to do, we've passed our audits and we've had great relationships with, doctor and with F doctors and with FDA. Um, so we're, we're very excited about getting this to market. Nancy told me early on, um, and you know, you know, I should probably uh, ask her again. Um, she told me she thinks this could be like a hundred patient 510K, 12 to, 12 to 18 months, um, just because we have a huge amount of predicates um, from the world of pill cameras. Uh, what, so what are uh, some next questions? One is, uh, next question, are there any, are you able to deliver GI specific drugs, for example, <laughs> IBD? Uh, which is inflammatory bowel disease. Sure. Can you give me the next slide, please? Yeah. So uh, here, let's let's uh, let's move to the next slide. So um, <laughs> I, I I would have loved to give you our pill surgeon uh, picture here, um, but uh, our IP lawyer Jordan Becker over at Perkins Coie has a uh, <laughs> he's hit me slapped me pretty hard on the wrist a few times. So um, this is a representation, but our our goal is to make the magic school bus for the human body, right? Um, the simplest possible version of that, in my opinion, is a moving eyeball in your stomach. Um, we, we think it's awesome. We think it's an exciting way to get started, but th this is not why we founded the company. Come on. You know, we want to do micro robotic brain surgery. Like we want to do custom ASIC. We want to go to rice grain size. Believe it or not, we're already prototyping wireless power. So here's a custom ferrite core that James made with a 10 part Delrin mold in our shop, you know, yeah, we can beam power onto a device, right? Um, uh, Cause batteries aren't gonna scale unless they're nuclear batteries like the Nano Diamond crew. Um, and one of our angel investors, uh, Adam Morley actually put us in touch with, with the folks that are doing surface mount semiconductor batteries using entrapped nuclear waste in crystalline matrix. Basically imagine a hearing, batter, hearing aid battery that lasts for like 10 years. So our, the extent of our vision is let's drive this all the way to nanobots. The extent of my personal ambition is a rice grain size bot that is location agnostic that can chew its way through tissue walls and cauterize behind it and maybe deliver drugs and snip things around arteries, like snip things around tumors. That's kind of the furthest I think I, this team could physically touch and make happen. But the question is what happens in between? What do we do immediately following PillBot hitting market, right? Um, well, we start doing biopsy. We start doing drug delivery. We uh, start having cargo bays. We start collecting microbiome samples at various locations. We start delivering microbiome transplants. Um, and the funny thing is, is Endiotics going to produce all those products or are other people going to use our tech and I don't know, license it? This is highly modular. Or are we just going to be part of a beautiful landscape of unfolding technology that's helping people? Um, I don't know, probably, probably most of that, right? Um, our goal is to show people that you can put a tiny robot in the body and that that robot can help people. A few more, few more questions yep. lined up. Let's talk to them. This work for colonoscopy too. Well, this work. <laughs> All right. So, um, so far we've put 18 robots to the founding team. Um, of those, 12 have been in my body. 
of those nine I've swallowed and of the remaining three, I stuck them up my ass in the bathtub um, with my chairman watching. And uh, you score a gallon of water up there, you clean yourself out. Um, and yeah, we can, we can function in the large intestine. Um, one thing I'll say is that it's not quite as fun and glamorous as going on a Zoom call and swallowing a robot and driving it around and actually seeing what's going on in my stomach. Um, I think that our device could be competitive in the world of colonoscopy, but I think our device is disruptive in the world of the stomach, okay? So that's kind of the difference. So will the tech go to the colon? I mean, probably, but we're, we're sort of starting with where it's most fun, most exciting. And then we'll see, like if I was gonna do that, I was talking with a VC yesterday. He's like, you know, can you do colonoscopy with this? It's like, yeah, I could make a, essentially take a colonic machine that uses warm water to clean out the, the bowel. Um, that gives me the environment I need to swim in. Then I pop, then the robot is admitted. It, it goes around, does its job, and then it comes out. Honestly, that would avoid a bowel prep and we need the water anyway. So, you know, maybe that would be uh, preferable to a colonoscopy where you have to do the prep um, and then, you know, get the tube jammed in um, with a little bit of sedation, right? So, you know, for the people on the call, you know, what would you want? Would you want that as an alternative? Eight more minutes. Okay. Uh, uh, and I'll step in and say that, you know, if we were really going to uh, go for the colonoscopy, we'd probably go back to the drawing board and come up with a different mode of, of movement, right? There's a lot of different ways. Tori was showing uh, some other, you know, items that are out there. There's a lot of different ways to move. And each environment in the body probably necessitates a different form. So, uh, you know, after we kind of get this done in the upper endoscopy, when we go to the, the colonoscopy, we'll probably do some more engineering and come up with a different, uh, a better mode of, of moving around inside the colon in order to perform that procedure. Yeah, so just, we'll see what, where, the, where the technology evolves to. Next question. Are there plans to make more than one bot work together to provide an end result? <laughs> yeah. So you could have one bot do diagnostics and one do say repair. Yeah. Uh, well, for sure. Right. So uh, we're doing that today on this call because I want to show you images of my body in real time. But I also have never seen my robot cruising around in, in, in a human before, um, except for one time in the Black Rock Desert. That's a whole nother story. Um, and so we're excited today to sort of get some double action here now. Pill surgeon might be a family of devices um, with, with different kinds of tools. A lot of the IP we've filed has to do with how you stack um, mechanical tools in, in the PillBot environment, in the ecosystem. Um, you know, is it like a radial array of like cruise missiles or is it like a, a linear stack of disks that sort of have pass through features? Um, it's a damn good question. You know, one thing we're realizing is our device does our device doesn't necessarily have to be Rambo. Like it can have limitations. It could even have battery limitations. Like we're, right now, the battery life you're about to witness is probably like 10, 15 minutes. I mean, we can sleep it, um, but you know, that's a, that's a challenge we're working through, but most endoscopies only last like 10 or 15 minutes, right? And so if, if we're able to release a device that um, can do most jobs on its one battery, um, and then occasionally the doctor might be like, oh, damn, ran out. In this one case, I'll use another one. Maybe that's okay. Um, but I kind of invite everyone to just kind of examine how we're doing business and what we're trying to do here, because our goal is to do awesome, fun robots that help people, um, you know, make money for our investors, but drastically lower costs for patients. And in general, just open this up to people that uh, might not have had these procedures and catch diseases that might otherwise not get caught. All right, quick thing on 510K. By the way, we have a spelling mistake, 501K. We'll fix that later. Thank oh, you. No. <laughs> uh, it should be fairly easy to get a 510K approval for the CAM imaging feature given yeah. the existing predicates like PillCAM. Good. Are there any substantially equivalent predicates for the microsurgery function to get a 510K in that function too? Or are you aiming to do a PMA for that second feature on a second <laughs> generation device? Okay, so it's not uncommon at least in my experience, to sort of um, leapfrog and piggyback 510Ks, right? So um, from our first device off a of pill cam, we're really hoping that's a 510K. Um, going into biopsy, that's just a damn good question. Um, I, I would defer that to a, 
to 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 the regulators who are on this call and to um to people who are, who are professionals in that field like if we keep it simple we might be able to do a 510k like biopsy style pillbot where that's all it's doing um i think if we suddenly whip out a swiss army knife of tools um fda is probably going to be very interested in the you know the safety and efficacy of that kind of a thing um so we're going to cross some of those bridges when we get to them but the fun thing is I think we'll be an insanely profitable company when we're crossing those bridges. Um, you know, so I'm in my living room and, you know, we build robots and I swallow them. That's one kind of an organization in terms of, you know, what our resources are. Um, I, I expect Endiotics to have a, a lot more horsepower on the R&D and regulatory side um, in the years that come. All right. Well, here let's uh, let's move to the next thing. So, um, let's just talk about some of the awesome people who are involved. And I, I even have uh, two people uh, a few slides out that aren't part of NDOX, but I just want to give them some credit. Uh, so, top left is uh, the head of our uh, advisory board, uh, Lieutenant Colonel Benjamin Bonus. Um, this guy is a uh, an ER doc, and we like ER docs because he's kind of like a gateway to all of medicine for us. Um, and then we obviously are, are very excited about our GIs. But uh, Ben is always flexing on me because he's my older brother and he gets to fly in the back of F-15s, uh, bastard. Um, he's a super cool dude. Uh, Heather Gallagher, top right. Um, she's an amazing artist and leader. She spent 17 years leading technology for Burning Man and she's just deep into the world of virtual reality. And you better believe we're going to be putting multiple cameras on this and getting stereoscopic, you know, you know, control it with an Oculus. Like, come on, that's obvious this technology is going to be able to swim around in a stomach and create a real-time um, three-dimensional map of the stomach and if you're wearing ar goggles you better believe you're going to see a glowing hologram in the patient um this is awesome this is really fun and we think it's going to be really good for people um paul escudero one of my oldest mentors um taught me everything i know about med device Ilya polyakov heads up hardware at doordash He's a BattleBots champion. Basically, we've got the biohackers and company founders. Um, Nancy Lindsay is a uh, red clean quality, as we mentioned. Uh, moving into the next board, uh, we've got Dr. Hay out of King's College, London, um, and uh, he's been he's been our biggest champion as a direct gastroenterologist. Um, and then uh, finally, you know, just uh, some amazing people that have uh, believed in us and invested in us, and the guys at Founder Institute at the bottom, Mike Adeo. Ryan Scout, who aren't mentioned here, you know, have been amazing in helping us get this company off the ground. Okay, so uh, we're almost done here, and uh, I'd like to give some special credit here. So Pietro Vald Valdastri and Metin Citi are just like titans in the world of soft robotics, micro robotics in the body. Um, these guys are heavily involved in the academic world, but also in industry. Um, you know, uh, these guys are are connected to very interesting startup tech and um they, they've been mentors to me actually and been willing to take my calls and just kind of you know I, I i felt like a very warm welcome from 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 some of the people that have done you know amazing work and we really are kind of standing on the shoulders of giants moving into this company and you know heading towards market so um at this point i think it's a pretty good time to say the presentation is over. Let's let's unmute. Let's start doing Q and A. Um, and uh, and the one question is, what is the prep? So you did a prep uh, <laughs> for this, and so talk a little bit about that. All right. Uh, I had a big burrito um, your early evening. You can eat whatever dinner you want. Um, you got to make sure you skip breakfast. Um, and during the morning, you drink a couple of glasses of warm water just to sort of get things flowing, get the get the orange goo out of your stomach, and just sort of turn that into water. Um, and so uh, by around lunchtime, or in this case, we're sort of like an early lunchtime, um, your stomach should be relatively free of, of weird gunk. And um, you just swallow the thing and drink some water. And we're actually going to incorporate the amount of water uh, we swallow um, into this presentation. So I'm going to swallow the robot um, and I'll just swallow it with a couple of gulps of water. And you'll see my stomach will probably be sort of like wrinkly and you know kind of tight and then i'll drink the rest of the pint and that should achieve like some minimum space to move around and then i've got a bunch of pints of warm water we would expect a typical patient 
to drink between one and two pints of water at the time that they swallow the robot to sufficiently sort of inflate the stomach. Um, I've taken as many as four pints. Um, it's a little uncomfortable and the stomach, you kind of lose a lot of the texture, which might be good for inspection, but it's uh, actually less fun because you see less cool contrast. So it's kind of like between one and four pints where hopefully one to two is normal. So, uh-oh, bot four just woke up. That's Breeze two on two. So. Uh-oh, bot three just woke up. Why don't you, why don't you pause bot four for um, <laughs> oh, here we three go. minutes. Okay, so X is full screen. So now what we're gonna do is uh, we're still sharing. So you're seeing the live view and Unfortunately, we weren't able to get um, our latest revision hardware, Rev3, which is bringing like almost a hundred times more bandwidth. We're, we're a few days out on that. So what we did is, uh, here, let me rotate this. <laughs> Look at that ugly guy. Okay, so what we did is uh, we just doubled the resolution and we've cut our frame rate to like one frame per second. Um, so uh, I think, uh, let me see here. So pause for? We're gonna pause for, for how long? Uh, five minutes. Five minutes. Okay. So we were, we just paused for, and now we've got three. Should I swallow this bad boy? Yeah, you can swallow it. Okay. And then let me see if we got to hit the Q thing. There we go. So um, if it looks all corrupted, we hit Q. All right. Well, enough talk. So uh, we're recording and here we go. All right. Well, apparently you can swallow one of those things. <laughs> All right. All right. And what we see is basically uh, going down through uh, the esophagus. I'll make that a little bigger for the folks. And uh, we'll let it stable as it kind of comes into the stomach. It took me a while to realize how long the esophagus is. See those dots? Yeah. We'll have to I keep seeing now. those, right? That All right, so now we're kind of, we're, <laughs> we're stabilizing uh, in Tori's stomach. Um, he's laughing, he's talking, so it's kind of bouncing around a little bit. Um, I drink a little bit more water. All right, let's drink some more water. That can't be good, right? Those, well, like, those white, white dots? Right? <laughs> We've been seeing them before, but we just never had enough resolution to like really know what they were. How, it would be hilarious if we like diagnosed some problem. <laughs> so, oh, check that out. So what our goal here is to get you like a perfectly neutrally buoyant little quadcopter submarine with really high quality, high resolution, focused, wide angle video. And if you follow Endiotics, you're gonna see that over the next, uh, over the next days, we're going to the high res video with uh, just lots of radio bandwidth, finally. Um, and then we're gonna start putting like maybe a fisheye lens on it. Um, and once again, I, I, I'd like to give some credit to Kratos Technologies. Uh, Zeki over there has been leading an awesome effort and just uh, finally helping us uh, get parallel threads of development here. We've got a huge amount of work um, for the Endiotics project and vision. And we're, you know, we're excited about where we are and where we've come from. But what comes next is uh, is even more incredible. All right, so here's what we're gonna do. You uh, stop talking so that it stabilizes. Um, I was shifted us into low power power thrust mode, um, and so we're gonna go ahead and do some some slight movements while uh, we kind of come on board here. You're pretty handsome. You might as well get your right, pretty yeah, face yeah. in here. So what I have is I have the Xbox controller, and it has basic functionality. Pretty intuitive. There's forward and back and roll. Um, and then there's pitch, uh, pitch basically left and, and uh, yaw. So you have roll and yaw here. So, uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and uh, go forward a little bit. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and uh, jet forward. And so we're gonna start moving, uh, you know, and around. Okay, so I'm looking, looking basically around there at the surface. Um, sort of maybe go look at some of those white dots that we saw. So I'm going to go forward a little bit more and forward a little bit more. And then we might want to consider sleeping this guy and, and uh, yeah. waking this other guy That's pretty good. soon. 
Okay, so now we got the, so the first bot's in the stomach and we're Hold able on. to move around and we see imagery. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, put him to sleep. sleep. And now uh, we're pretty much gonna shift over to the other bot. Uh, All right. Which should, uh, if we pull that screen up. All right, let's see how we're doing over here. So the other guy's gonna awake in two minutes. So, or one minute, 30 seconds. So um, does anyone wanna unmute and just ask a question or a comment or tell us we're totally crazy? Um, and then I guess, Harry, do you know if people have the ability to unmute? Um, can someone say something? See if I can hear him. I think it's totally fascinating. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody oh. can unmute. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. So, uh, folks, uh, let's let's chit chat. What uh, <laughs> what do you what do you think? <laughs> My only concern is like for colonoscopy, isn't it a little larger area than uh, than endoscopy and would that have an effect or? Um, you know, the, the funny thing is that our, our, our technology, you know, we got to thumb size at the beginning of 2020 and we thought maybe we'd swallow that one, but uh, that was just too big for me to get down. And it, it was actually kind of, you know, there was some safety concern. But this one, we thought maybe it could work in the colon just because the, the, the large intestine can have a fairly good diameter if you inflate it. Um, but um, we, we, think, we think we could probably be able to turn around in, in the diameter of the colon with proper inflation. Um, but uh, it's a great point. You know, it's, it's, it's not like a big open volume like the stomach is. How does right, the quality, so, um, I have a question. Uh -oh. So look, uh, we got uh, bot number two just, uh -oh. just came up. So let's go ahead and get this one inside. Oh boy. All right. You guys ever this kind of another planet water? <laughs> the things I do for any other. Okay. Here Rory. Yo. I have a question for you. How does the quality, yeah. maybe you covered this already, but how does the quality of the image of your uh, device compare to the quality of the image from an endoscope? Oh, um, in technical terms, it sucks ace. Um, but uh, you're looking at Rev2 hardware, and the uh, the robot that we were putting together later this week, um, we're actually expecting on the order of one to one uh, image quality. Uh, super excited about that. Yeah. Uh -huh. So the, the quality of the camera itself is 640 by 480. A typical um, uh, endoscope mm -hmm. is you know 400 by 400 or 500 by 500. So it's it's exactly of the same resolution. Oh. We we just degrade this the signal basically to get more data out of Sweet this radio. Idea, Marcus, well, not, not yet. So let's go. So now here we go. We have both bots are up inside yeah. Tori's stomach, and so we're gonna drive uh, the new bot and try to go find the old bot. So I kind of drove the old bot forward, and now I'm gonna go ahead and drive the new bot and sort of see if we can um, go find it. So cool. I'm going to move around a little bit. Um, because the light's on, I should, I'm basically looking for, I want to see this one mostly. Okay. Uh, I'm basically going to be looking for uh, some bright lights. So let's see if I can look around. And I can see it either on either one of them. So I'm rotating now. Why don't I level the playing field? And Tori's drinking more water as we're doing this, which gonna is open which is up gonna, the stomach a little bit, and it's gonna move things around as the water kind of flows in there. All right, so here we go. I'm going driving on the right screen here. Oh, there's something there. That's yeah, okay. That's so just... I think I'm butted up against it. So I'm gonna back up now <laughs> and back up just slightly. Oh, you're oh, looking stop, right at the back. Drinking water, stop drinking water. I'm sorry. <laughs> You were looking at the pump jet. I was looking at the pump jet, sir. Oh, that's awesome. Okay, so um, no more drinking water. Hang on one second. I'm going to go take that away. Go find this. So I'm going to rotate to the right and see <laughs> if I can see him again. We were we were right we were right next to him for a second. I'm rotating right. I'm rotating right. Oh, you got something. Okay, there he is. Okay, so now I'm going to pitch up and see if I can get back to that look at that pump jet. I'm pitching up, just giving a slight bumps because I'm right. I'm I'm butting up against him. So. Yeah. Um, Check the battery levels. It looks like bot four is getting a little. Oh, look at that! There it is. Okay, I saw That's motors. Pretty cool. <laughs> okay, right. why don't we sleep? So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna uh, yeah go ahead and sleep four. All right. 
And now I'm going to go back to three. It's a beautiful image, though. Oh, wow. Look at that. Wow. So uh, so what it is, is basically I am right up against the back side of number three here. So now I'm going to back number three up. I just give you one minute sleep. OK, good. Um, just say yeah, go ahead. one thing is right now with our batteries, we're hitting the batteries a little harder than we'd like to. And uh, when you just give it a little pause, that uh, that really extends it. Um, these are typical R and D problems. Out. Okay, this guy right here. Yeah, we're just uh, fifty seconds away. Oh, okay, cool. Well, so we got three seconds for questions. So yeah, does any uh, any any further questions? Um, uh, anyone well, have uh, a question? Uh, yeah, yeah I, I may have missed it. This is a single use device. Yeah, single use kind of piggybacking on what a pill camera single use is. Right, like. right. So and then the, the, you think you have any problems with how it degrades once it reaches the uh, excrement and the uh, areas of the sewage? Uh, here's one that uh, went all the way through me. And um, basically, we use the same devices that uh, or, I'm sorry, not devices, but materials that you'd see in the world of pill cameras. So like polycarbonates, a ABS. Um, stainless steel in the 300 series, Teflon and stuff like that. Um, those are all materials that uh, can, can hang out in an acidic environment and just kind of not really be affected um, for a certain amount of time, right? This robot wouldn't be appropriate to implant into the human body for years, um, but for you know a typical you know, 24 hours, uh, typical window, um, these, these material combinations are actually pretty appropriate. Okay, so uh, bot uh, came back up. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to, uh, this is gonna come on live. Yeah, you're 40 um, seconds. So I'm gonna back up um, this one and see if I can see the, 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 the second bot. So I'm backing the first bot up now because I'm looking right there. Here we go. Yeah, this is, uh, this is fun. We're, we're really looking forward to the next few months where you know, obviously with the video signals and wide angle lenses coming online um, and, you know, getting neutral buoyancy going, that's freaking weird. What's that? <laughs> we, we say this a lot when we go inside Tori's stomach. We're like, <laughs> I've never seen that before. <laughs> what am I looking at? We should probably get a GI to drive these around. So. All right. So, um, so don't, don't move around too much. Okay. I'm going to chill out. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and rotate uh, a little bit to the left here and see if we can go find bot four. This is fun. Healthy battery on bot four. Oh, okay. Bot, Let's do let me let me sleep bot three. That's fine. I'll go back to bot two minutes. Four. Okay. All right, so so here we go. Now we're just driving around looking for the the bots. We're trying to <laughs> see if we can find the other ones. Uh, I'm going to switch into low power mode, and we're driving. This is fun. Okay. Um, Do you to want me to like lean back, maybe? No, no, no. We're we're good. We're good. Okay. Right here. Yeah. So uh, this is a. Uh, we're kind of honored to have people joining, you know, literally seeing our R and D happening in real time, right? And we share this with with the world because, you know, we're starting to take really big checks, and we're starting to get major venture capitalists, you know, enrolling in our seed round, and we need to basically build credibility with the people who are believing in us, and so we like to share what we actually have as opposed to, you know, sort of, uh, you know, what we wish we had, because when you, when you look at our progress over time, you know, starting with the, you know, the giant pool bot and just kind of slowly working our way down to appropriate sizes, you know, we hope that you see a trend that will continue forward in time, right? And that's where, that's where we feel like we have a pretty healthy um, engagement of, you know, the, the entrepreneurial landscape, you know, from hard, medical professionals all the way to venture capitalists. Okay, I'm gonna sleep this guy. Um, awesome, any uh, any questions? I have another question, uh, Terry, uh, uh, Tori, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah. It's very, it's very, uh, it's very exciting to, to see where you are and recognize that, you know, you've got a lot of, still have a lot of things to do. I'm looking at this from a safety standpoint. So sure. the, the whole, 
uh, interior content of the bot, um, particularly the battery. And think about a situation where the patient does not pass the device um, and exactly what the consequences are and how that might be facilitated. I mean, um, I, you know, the small bowel is, is, is a much more uh, constricted and obstructed areas. As we get in the large bowel, it's pretty, pretty straightforward if uh, the diet is adjusted appropriately. But um, have, you got to almost break down every single component and look at the, um, the consequence of uh, it breaking down, you know, in some fashion. Uh, could you or, talk about that? Yeah. Um, first of all, uh, we wouldn't be on this call if pill cam didn't exist, right? Um, uh, that just wouldn't be possible. So, you know, this is pill cam currently owned by Medtronic. And uh, they, they worked very hard to prove to FDA that um, you could have electronics in a pill, that, that you could have batteries in a pill. Um, the, the question of battery chemistry is always an important one. Um, and there are many chemistries involved. Um, thank goodness there are med devices that, that, that lean on many different chemistries that we can sort of pull some regulatory predicates from. Bottom line is, um, in our uh, uh, FMEA and CRA, um, and PMFEA, we, we have to prove conclusively that, you know, this thing sticks together. And when one of our, uh, you know, joints fails, we have redundant joints. Um, but from a, a straight up question of, you know, what happens if a battery is hanging out in the human body in direct contact, that's, that's no bueno. Um, uh, our, uh, the head of our advisory board, Dr. Bonna said, look, Tori, I don't even care if your device leaks. You know, if, if, if fluid gets in and you start to electrolyze, you know, you get a little hydrogen gas, you'll get a little oxygen gas, like, but super low volumes. Um, he's like, I really don't care about that. Do not let that battery physically touch the inside of your body because you can create an electrical burn that can actually be a big problem. And so a lot of the work we go into is making sure the thing doesn't fall apart. Um, but um, in terms of, you know, what happens when one of these gets stuck, you know, if, if a patient has diverticulitis, that would be a hard contraindication for use on this one. Uh, if you had a stricture in your esophagus, th that's just not going to work out. You'd have to go to a conventional um, endoscopy or colonoscopy. Um, so yeah, we lean heavily on the world of, of pill cameras uh, to, to provide a little bit of guidance here. Um, and then in addition to that, we're, we're hoping that when our systems fail, Hopefully, we sort of fail into the safety profile of a pill camera. Quick, so, with that in mind, that. Uh, well, why do you think that pill cam, the uptake on pill cam is still so small? It's passive. It's uh, doctors don't trust it to replace their use of an endoscope, right? Doctors have a choice of which tool to reach for, and they reach for the pill cam in a, you know one to three percent of cases. Um, so it's like very small children, cancer patients with a very delicate um, GI tracts due to the, the chemotherapy. Um, small bowel is a great place for, for, uh, for pill cameras because they can just sort of passively move through there. Um, but our goal is actually to, to, to really go disrupt the world of endoscopes. We, we want to make a tool that um, doctors would reach for instead of an endoscope most of the time uh, for the world's belly aches. Uh, Tori, what's the uh, size difference between a pill cam and your pill bot at this <laughs> current time versus what you hope to sure. get to? Because that obviously affects whether or not it blocks the small intestine or not. Oh, yeah. So ours is, uh, ours is a little bit longer. We're about a millimeter more in diameter right now. Um, so there's a, there's a pill camera and, and pill bot. Let me move them around so I'm not cheating here. Um, yeah, we're a little bit bigger, a little bit fatter. Um, and, you know, we're always always getting smaller. Um, although our GIs are telling us that, uh, you know, one in 20 patients will refuse a pill camera. Um, and so we would expect, you know, uh, not every patient willing to swallow ours, but um, we are kind of excited that the GIs are saying, yeah, that's safe. That's fine. You can swallow it. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's this, this doesn't have to be used hundred percent of the time. We just want it to be used most of the time. Yep. No, other questions? 
Tori, can I uh, ask you about your, um, so you said you are in seed round of funding or? Yeah, uh, what sure. We, um, we're, we're very excited. Like we, we just, we've had to oversubscribe our angel round a number of times. We have, we have to keep reauthorizing it. Um, so like we, I think we're currently 236% oversubscribed on angel round. And there are a few high, high net worth individuals that are talking about, um, I guess like on the order, like a six figure check still might make it into angel round or like high five figures. Um, seed round, we're targeting a mixture of venture capitals from about a quarter of our seed round is intended to be a med device VC. And um, we're speaking to some very, very awesome med device venture capitalists right now. Um, I want a quarter of our fund is already enrolled, which is a uh, biotech. Um, and uh, we're very, very proud to be associated with Lantana Biosoft. Uh, they operate in Silicon Valley and Guanajuato. And I actually got on an airplane uh, a year ago and flew down to Mexico and pitched them in Spanish. Um, and that slowly turned into a, a million dollar commitment. Um, the other two areas of VC that we're bringing on board is Frontier Tech, um, which is uh, quantum computers, people investing in things like SpaceX, stuff like that. Um, and then the last one is space venture capitalists. Um, Endiotics is going to be huge for space medicine. And although, although the space medicine market, um, which Elon is creating by putting lots of people up, um, it's going to be a very small market, but it's a cool flagship market. And space venture capitalists love having large dual markets back on Earth. And also, space venture capitalists aren't really scared of our tech the way like a, a SaaS investor might be afraid. <laughs> um, so yeah, but med device, biotech, deep tech, and uh, space tech, that is the kind of people and organizations that we're looking to partner with um, as, cool. as we go. Here, you know what? At this point, I'm gonna I'm gonna stop the screen share because the bots yeah, are yeah, finally kind of dying. Thanks, and uh, yeah, yeah. So Sorry, uh, we're, we're actively recruiting seed. Hey, Luke, how's it going? Um, actively recruiting seed. Um, there there are a few stragglers that might be able to make it into the angel round, but uh, we've been really proud to just slowly work our way up the check size. Like, you know, we we took a ten thousand dollar check <laughs> early on. <laughs> Um, you know, our, our friends and family round with like personal net worth was 15 to 25, 40, you know, you, you slowly earn your way through the, through the. What are you looking for in your first round? Say what? $3 million. Oh, what, what? our target for seed is a 3 million raise split um, between four different types of venture capitalists. And I'll, I'll be honest with you guys. Um, we, we would love to oversubscribe it. Um, but we tell all of the VCs we're working with that if we have an opportunity to oversubscribe seed, we're going to try to work with them on terms because the goal is to sell about 20% of the company at the seed round um, and then about 10% of the company at Series A. Um, as a CEO uh, for 24 months and uh, three days or four days, um, my goal is just to have a steady steady increase in the, the valuation of the company. Um, Proteus uh, Digital Health um, unfortunately fell into a trap um, where they, they raised $500 million and their, their last round that they raised was at a $1.5 billion valuation. And unfortunately they weren't able to surpass that valuation as they went to raise more money. And so the, they, they ended up imploding. 300 people laid off, 500 million to the grave, right? So with Endiotics, you know, like I think our angel round cap was like 10 million. Um, seed target would be 3 million on a 15 post. Um, for for Series A, I'd love to bring in 10 on 100 million. You know, but keep keep the curve reasonable. Yeah. Thank you. Absolutely. Could you say something about your IP? Uh, where are you? Uh, sure. And what what is it that you think you have that's truly unique here because there's yeah. a lot of IP in the First of all, um, Perkins Cooey has been an amazing partner on this journey from the corporate law side with Jim Brenner to the IP law with, with Jordan Becker. Um, when we had very little money, they got us a provisional back in June of uh, 2019. And since then, they've been able to work with that provisional and um, turn it into five full-fledged applications, uh, three domestic, two international. Um, 
plus the trademarking efforts underway. Um, some of that original priority date was kept, uh, probably not for all of the patents, but, uh, but, but for some of them, we think we do have that original priority date. Um, so it's a, it's a spectrum, but uh, I guess what I love about founding this company with my friends is as an R&D engineer in the past, you know, I was constantly getting to say, oh, you can't work on that. Someone has IP on that. Um, but as a company founder, working directly with Perkins Cooey, they were like, Tori, build your robots, build your tech, we'll work with you, we'll guide you through the process. You're going to have challenges, but, but, but we want you to build this dream. Our core tech is based around a quad pump jet, uh, basically making the quadcopter of swimming robots. <laughs> Yeah, you're going to have challenges, as you say, but, um, you know, with good, yeah. good representation. Um, and of course, there's always the issue of cross licensing and other ways around to navigate in the space. So that's not out of the question. You know, you've got something somebody wants and you could trade that for something you need. This is one of the reasons why we've been very, very thoughtful about what types of venture capitalists we've been speaking to and reaching out to because we, we need partners who can help us and, and offer guidance. Um, for example, I don't think anyone would invest in this company if they didn't think it could sell for a billion dollars. And so when we look at the size of the gastroscopy market and the, 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 the unit economics of Pillbot, we think we're building a billion dollar company with, with the Pillbot product line. And so if we come to a juncture where we might have an acquisition opportunity, you know, do we just sell the whole thing or, or do we sell the Pillbot product line or license it, right? So that the core team can keep pushing down, you know, to get to the pill surgeon, to the micro surgeon. Um, yeah, we'll need guidance when, the, when those times come. But we're not, we're not here for a quick buck. This is a long haul. Um, at Endiotics, we don't like fast, easy money. We like slow, hard money. Tori, knowing you guys and some of the team and your tenacity, I have no doubt you're going to succeed in this in this venture. Thanks, Carrie. You know, eight of our nine first investors uh, had watched us uh, work very hard for three years in a row to get a giant Tesla coil built out in the desert, and they said, you know, we you, know, you guys are pretty damn smart, but uh, you just won't give up, and that's 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 maybe even more important than the brain power sometimes. <laughs> It is having a good team. Sorry, Kerry. What is the billing landscape like, Tori? Is it one bot or is it a fleet of bots? What can you charge for? Um, I think our goal is just to sell them um, as an individual bot. Like, you know, you'd get billed for, you know, a call. Patient, one pill bot procedure. Um, our customers are, are hospitals, right? So a hospital would buy a big old case of them, you know, um, maybe 10, 20, 100 at a time, something like that. The fun thing is our tech, um, I mean, we've, we've been in the Black Rock Desert setting up a table, pop the lap up and laptop out and just hand Xbox controllers out to random weirdos and let them race them around in my stomach. And it's like this thing deploys out of a briefcase. And so for a clinic, that's just cool because we're not trying to sell you a giant rolly cart control station uh, the software is going to be free. Our, our customers are so few and the customer value is so high that we're just going to make it easy. Like use the, use the bot and uh, save the patient money and we get to make money too. It's kind of cool. <laughs> is, is there a chance that there's a reimbursement code that you're going to be able to use or are you going to have to develop your own code? Oh man, I got grilled on that yesterday on a VC call. Um, so we're gonna try to shoot for a pill camera, right? We're gonna we're gonna yeah. try to just say this is a pill camera. Um, it, it costs it about does the same get more thing. value that way. I I I I hope so. But the thing is, like, if if we run the numbers and we find out we're not lowering a patient's cost of endoscopy by like 10x, then we're not really disrupted. Like, I'm I'm a fan of Peter Diamandis where he says demonetize, dematerialize, you know make it 10 times better, 10 times cheaper. And those are our goals. And so you can hold me to that, right? If, 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 if in a couple of years, it's like, oh, wow, Tori is trying to be the baron of, you know, stomach inspection and, you know, people are dying because they can't afford the procedures. Like that's not, 
how I was raised, <laughs> right? We want to make awesome tech that unlocks new possibilities, and we want to make it available to anyone who's interested. Um, and and that's kind of where the fun is. That's where the motivation comes to, you know, you know, like I have 179 venture capitalists on my uh, investor hit list, and thousands of angels we've talked to, um, and we've had three yeses on that list of 179. Right. So you have to be motivated from within. No, no, I agree. Other questions? If not, uh, sorry. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, good luck in uh, retrieving your cameras. Uh, and uh, uh, drink lots of beer tomorrow with uh, the uh, St. Patrick's Day. Uh, yep. And from that point of view, join us next week when we talk a little bit about uh, medical device incubators. And uh, we'll see how that works out there. Also, since this is the first time I'm going to try on a recording, I'll get back to you and tell you whether I've done it or not done it. So. Okay, so thanks for coming today, everybody. Uh, turns out that uh, you you passed the maximum that we've ever had. We had 62 before is the maximum, and we got 63 to people today. So uh, congratulations on a, a Guinness World Record. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll uh, we'll uh, celebrate with a Guinness. And okay. One of the fun things is uh, 3 p.m. today. I'm I'm going to Angel Launch and I'm going to pitch the company, not to try to get money, but we were pitching Angel Launch when all we had was Pillbot or Poolbot, <laughs> and we made a lot of friends. And some of the people, you know, we met there didn't give us money, but they let me put them on their monthly up on my monthly update, my my BCC. Um, I'm just Tori T O R R E Y at ndiotics.com if you want to reach out. But the neat thing is. We send a monthly update on the first of the month, every month like clockwork. And people have turned into angel investors 12 months in, right? And that's why we're going to angel launch today is just to basically thank, present the company, let them know where, what we've turned into and, and just thank everyone for being willing to let us pitch this and present it. Um, you know, I wish I could just show you a micro nuclear powered robot surgeon, but I'm, un, I'm unable to prototype that in my living room with my best friends, but this little bot I think has potential. So thank you everyone for letting us share this process. And, and if you have founders in your life um, who are trying to start companies, please use me as a connector. I'm turning into a really good um, investor founder connector. And I want to help other founders like Luke Daly with his screening app, who's on this call and presented recently. We're actually pitching at Angel Launch together. I want to help other founders um, maybe not wait until they got white nose hairs to, to launch their first company. Sounds good. So thank you, Tony. Very exciting. Thank you, Harry. Thank you so much, everybody. It was awesome.